So good morning and welcome to Essential Ingredients. I'm your host, Justine Reichman. With me today is Dustin Baker. He is the president of Bioprotein Technology. Welcome, Dustin. Thank you, Justine, for having me. I'm very excited to be here and I appreciate uh, you letting me come on here and, and talk for an exorbitant amount of time. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's not go crazy, exorbitant. You know, we don't want to, we want to keep it, you know, fresh and to the point and, you know, although I used to go on these things for ages and then I realized people's attention span is about 20 to 30 minutes for these. And then no, they like I, that's them. incredible. That's way more than mine. So I, I applaud anybody who's <laughs> got 20 or 30 what minutes to uh, handle them there. It's more than mine too. I don't know how some people do three hour podcasts, but I give them a lot of credit. I just don't think I can either listen or talk that long. All right, listen, I hear you. I have shows, <laughs> podcasts, it's like there's so much and maybe it's just the world we live in, but there's just so much going on at all times. The, you know, family, work, all this kind of stuff is like, man, hour long, two hour long podcasts like this is, you got some time on your hands. I <laughs> applaud you for creating it. <laughs> So in the meantime, before we get we kick this off, or as we kick this off, if you could just introduce yourself and what you do. Yeah, my name is Dustin Baker. I'm president uh, of Bioprotein Technology. We make non-synthetic alternatives to common prescription drugs. So we work in the hormone spaces, the sleep spaces, uh, human human optimization is what we like to say. That sounds good. Who doesn't want to human uh, optimize their humanization? Right. You know, I, I, I don't know either. That's why we're in the business. I totally hear you, but um, I'm sure there's someone out there, but yeah, we're, we like to think we're in a very exciting field and uh, the market is very, has a great appetite for what we do. So it's, it's been an exciting few years to say the least. So I know that you bought this company. Um, and so I'm curious what your speciality and background was that led you to buy this company. Yes. So um, my, my work has always been in sales and marketing and messaging and advertising. Um, but I did in that realm, I worked in professional athletics. I worked in, um, I mean, the gym business, fitness, health and wellness overall. I did that for, you know, better part of a decade or longer than that. And it, it really led me to, as I got older along with it, it led me into the acquisition of this company, which is a medical brand by nature and focuses on hormone support, endocrine systems, uh, anti-aging, rejuvenative or regenerative medicine. So it's been a wild ride. There's a, a ton of in, a ton of you know nuances in how I got here, but at its base and core, I've, I've always worked in human health and wellness, and it's led me to uh, you know this side of the spectrum. So I appreciate that. And it sounds like you've got a great foundation for this and a lot of both personal interests as well as experience that, you know, makes it just ideal to connect with all these things and bring them all together. But I'm curious, how did you find out about BioPro and why BioPro? So, yeah, well, BioPro is actually the most evolved of the formulas that we acquired and or hold as an entire brand. And the cool thing about BioPro and those formulas is before I ever even bought the company and we bought the company in 2018, um, I was a user of the products. So I purchased them. I paid full price. I, I, I always love them. And through each one of our or my career ventures, whether that was way, you know, years and years ago when I took over my first gym or actually started there as a janitor, we were joking about being a janitor, but that's literally how I kind of started my career is cleaning equipment uh, and toilets and taking out garbage in gyms. But um, uh, at, through every one of my ventures, whether it was from taking over gyms to creating my own concept to working in professional athletics and with pro athletes, these formulas of this company that I had found in Florida, <clears throat> Tampa to be specific, I had threaded in and used um, across different populations, right? So younger professional athletes, middle-aged people just trying to work out and have a good time doing so to weekend warriors, triathletes, you know, stuff like that. And these formulas had always worked. They had worked and they had worked safely. And that was like a big thing, right? In fact, like I just said, I used them. So as we threaded them in, um, eventually we kind of came to a point of like, okay, well, these are real. These work. They repeatedly work there. They have a phenomenal success. We got to figure out a better way to do this and get this to the rest of the world. And that's exactly why we acquired the company and why we're doing what we're doing. So 
When you originally were using these, what was your objective on a personal level? So I liked to think of myself and I was never a professional athlete. I, I like to make that clear, but I liked to try and hang with those guys. So I was really lucky um, in my late twenties, early thirties to get to work out with professional, it was specifically it was in football, professional football players and like to hang. And it was a really great experience. Right. And I was actually kind of getting paid to do so. And so I liked to think of myself as a pseudo competitive professional athlete. And I wanted to hang on to that kind of idea. I have a competitive nature uh, internally, mentally. I have a competitive outlook on life and I wanted to move faster. I wanted to stay leaner. I wanted to feel better. I wanted to do more in less time and I wanted to perform better. So that's why I always kind of gravitated and used the products. And so can you tell us a little bit about how that impacted your feelings and what your response was? And yeah. What you were and, able and to I, do before and after. Sure. Well, and I, I think this goes way beyond actual physical output, right? So you know, from an actual, literally physical competition, I, I had done lots of things. I won different competitions. I did a lot of cool stuff, but realistically, internally, what I found with individuals like myself and others is, especially as we age, we just, we physiologically are not the same as we used to be there. You cannot escape that. I don't care if you're a professional athlete and I don't care if you're a 45 year old mother of five working a job, taking care of kids. Like we, we physiologically change every single year after we finish puberty. And that has not just a physical effect on us, right? It has a mental, a cognitive and emotional effect on us as well. We always want to be the best versions of ourselves. And sometimes we wake up as older individuals and we look in the mirror and we don't, we don't see the person that we used to, right? Or we've put ourselves aside. We've put ourselves on the back burner to take care of those families, to take care of those jobs, or to take care of some of the other things that we have to do. And emotionally and internally, I was no different of wanting to hang on to, or at least get back some of those, <clears throat> the better parts of that, of those years from a, a human performance or how I feel. And that's what we do as a company. And that's exactly what I would experience myself. Wow, that's amazing. And to be able to then go off and get the company to be able to expand the message so that you can reach a broader audience, I imagine, <clears throat> pardon me, is, you know, exciting. Yes, like I said, I'm, uh, I'm a competitive guy by nature. And uh, if I want something, I typically figure out how to get it. Sometimes it takes longer than I'd like, <laughs> but it does happen. Um, this was this was a pretty easy thing that we were able to do. It was um, companies are really only for sale for one of two reasons. One, they're wildly already successful and a large venture capitalist firm or private equity comes in, scoops them up and dumps a ton of cash way past the original individual could possibly do. The second is that there is some sort of a, let's say a renovation needed. And whether that's managerially, whether that's processes and systems, whether that's a cash issue, uh, that's why the other reason why they would be available for acquisition and ours was the latter. And it was actually, um, I wouldn't say the easiest thing, but I would say it was, it was quite quick and simple to kind of get a deal done and everybody was on the same page. And I think certain things happen for a reason. And that was one of them. So walk me through this timeline. You pick it up, you pick up the company, you buy the company. Mm -hmm. And at what point did you go from owning this company to then creating, you know, a much more successful company than it was when you first got it? And what did it sure. take for you to be able to do that, both managerially and financially? So it was the, the good thing about the brand was that it was a cash flow positive brand, meaning it, it wasn't a, a complete necessary startup. Um, it had a it had a positive cash flow. So there was room to grow with that. Um, but for the first couple years, <clears throat> this was 2018, 2019, 2020, we, we are just kind of getting our arms around what the brand actually held. We knew we were buying formulas and we knew we were buying, um, assets or we knew we were buying, you know, the, the, the branding, but other than everything else, we kind of left everything else behind and we wanted to redo it all. So, uh, it took uh, several years to figure a lot of that stuff out. And I will tell you that in 2020, if we all remember, we went through a large change in the uh, the world and the economy, mm -hmm. how business was done through 
you know, COVID and this whole thing. And frankly, when, when COVID happened, it forced us to rethink our business model from a small regional company where we were supplying medical offices and in the different parts. And we had some all over the country, but we were, we were really, we were really still just a small regional company. And anyway, we didn't do much anything on the internet. And with COVID happening and clinics shutting down in some of our largest areas like New York, California, um, Las Vegas, we, like everybody had to change. And that forced us, um, to figure out how to do business on the internet. And since we figured out and built the infrastructure to do so, along in that process, we spent the time that we had on our hands in creation and development of better products that had better efficacy, that were more focused on the user experience and how they would actually take our products, view our products, um, literally receive them. And since 2020 until right now, we went from a small regional company, which did do business across the United States, but now we're in over 40 different countries and on every continent other than, other than Antarctica with physicians internationally providing our products. So it's, it was, uh, you know, I, I it's always cute. say, well, <laughs> we like to think so we got a long ways to go, but, um, yeah, I think things like COVID and other different types of obstacles that will always rear their heads are opportunities for growth and opportunities to overcome maybe obstacles you didn't know you were going to have to, and it forces you to do so. Can you share a couple of key things that you felt helped make this successful for you to grow for, as a regional company to somebody that's now, or an organization that's now in over 40 countries? Yes, absolutely. And I will tell you because I've made all of these mistakes prior. <laughs> um, yeah. I So the number one thing, we talk about and we preach now heavily is base the base hit mentality and the base hit mentality is building your business whatever your idea might be whether it's writing a book building a business doing anything like that is is focusing on base hits not just swinging for home runs so what that means is for us we look at every single customer as important as every whether they're a customer that buys one unit from us or buys 100 units from us or we're working on deals with other countries for a thousand units at a time. Everybody gets treated the same and everyone is, is, is as important as everybody else. So each one of those sales, because they are sales, but each one of those individuals to provide something to our customers, whether it's one or a thousand, you focus on just continuing to build those bricks one at a time, one, one, one. And what you'll find is, is that you are creating a compounding, almost snowball-like effect, and your business will actually grow faster that way than spending 24 months, 36 months just swinging for the fences every time and striking out and maybe getting a home run here and there. So that would be the number one thing. The number two thing would be what we like to say is never outkick your coverage. You have a certain amount of money you can spend. Sp spend under that. Learn how to grow in the black. Learn how to grow profitably. Don't don't overextend yourself so far that now you're pressed up against a wall. You will sleep better at night. You will continue to grow your business just fine, but learning how to grow modestly because it really actually works faster if you do that than, than with an ego. The third thing is no matter whether it's a product, no matter whether it's a service, if you are starting out, you need to just figure out something that works, that you truly believe in and use. It doesn't need to be shiny. It doesn't need to be beautiful. It can be very rough around the edges, but you need to be able to continuously, consistently deliver a product that works. You can clean it up. You can shine it up. You can polish it over the years, but it has to work. You got to believe in it and it has to be able to be repeatable. Couldn't agree more. And I like the idea of making your goals accessible and attainable because you know it's great to have reaches but it's also great to get to first base like you were saying um and then to second base and then to third base and then do yeah. the home run and i think that that's why you can you continue to feel success you continue to feel improvement and growth uh as opposed to swinging for those big ones and it being a miss or not quite getting there but equally having some set of success but not acknowledging it because it's not what you had put out there that you wanted.
I mean, I agree. I, I, you know, I did work in sports for a while. So a lot of my sports are a lot of my, uh, analogies or metaphors are sports-based, which is insane for somebody who literally never played a, <laughs> never, never really played a sport, but it's the guys in baseball. It's guys that, um, you know, get base hits all the time. Those are your 30 year players. And those are the guys that go down in, in the, you know, the hall of fame and have the biggest contracts, the guys that swing for the fences and get a home run here and there, they play for a year or two and you never hear from them again. So, um, Take that for what it's worth. A, a lot of really incredible, massive businesses are built on, you know, just one brick, one win at a time and winning all the time, even if it's small, as you just stated, I mean, you agree is, is way better for the human spirit than, mm -hmm. you know, just, I mean, swinging for the fences is exhausting. I'll tell you, it really is. And I've done it and I've made the mistakes before. So I take my word for it. Save yourself the trouble. I agree. So, you know, you've been doing this now for a few years. You've grown to 40 countries, no longer just a regional organization. What do you see for your future next three to five years? What are your, you know, what are your hopes, both in the small scale and the large scale? Uh, business wise, the hopes in a small scale is we want to continue to develop our brand and still grow. We have a ton of runway to go and we have a, we, we still have a ton of work to do. We are working on different formulas and, and things that are more specific, whether it be for men or for women specifically or skin or all kinds of stuff like that from a, and to, to, to basically build the, the platforms for, and the systems and the processes to launch those, to make those as successful as BioPro. The, the larger scale business goals, we have very specific monetary goals that we would like to achieve from a growth of the brand. Um, and I would say on the largest goal would be a nine figure valuation of the company, which we feel we can do within the next inside of the next decade. So those are our two uh, main goals right up front and long term. That's exciting. That's a, that's a huge, that's huge. We will see. <laughs> it's okay, easier said than top done, top. Justine. It's easier said than done. Yeah, I know. So within that and within BioPro and your other products and your other things that you are building and offering, um, are there any cutting edge medical endeavors or products that you're working on that you can share with us? Um. We are, we have been in discussion and our product, our existing products right now are both for men and women. However, mm -hmm. we do notice and have identified that when it comes to our female audience, there are specific needs that need to be met outside of a gender neutral product line that men don't actually necessarily benefit as much from as women would by changing a few things up. So we have been working on some stuff for, I would say in a lot of it is theory and ideas, but uh, from its inception, but is creating um, and applying female specific ingredients and spe female specific product. So that is, is directly for what women have issues with, et cetera, specifically in the, the menopause era, the premenopause, menopause, and postmenopause spaces. I'm thinking that. Yeah. And that's honestly, it's not because of me. Cause I don't, I don't, you know, I'm, I'm lucky enough to not deal with those things. Men have their own thing called andropause, but it ain't the same. And, mm -hmm. um, but our, what that's just what our physicians have found. They found such success with our products in the female space when they're prescribing it for women in that space, it is just, um, it just keeps calling out to us. So it's been something we've been slowly working on for quite some time and how do we position it appropriately and what is that right formula? That's what we're working on specifically. So talk to me a little bit about the people you have on your team with this expertise that helps you build these out, both whether it's about the research or the development. Yeah, sure. So number one, we lean on our physicians. We have, whether it's a single unit office, anywhere in the country to we even have national franchises that provide our products. They're all clinical based. And what's really cool about the medical community is that they like to be involved. Physicians like to be involved, whether they have a piece of the pie or not. They're, I think, more interested on tagging their name on something that really works and being a, being a part of that cutting edge, um, especially in our space where the 
Um, I mean, it is what it is where the, the government actually highly regulates our types of products and have recently even banned our only competition. So th th this is in the United States specifically, this is a huge, uh, the space we're in is, is way at the front, the front lines right now, because people are scraping to figure out how they're going to you know, save their patients, let alone, uh, when I mean, save their patients, not save their lives, but save them from, you know, figuring out different types of treatments and stuff that they would, you know, move to a different clinic for. So physicians are very actually helpful and very, I mean, excited to, to give us their feedback, test the products in different ways, tell us how they feel things should be tried or what they would add, what they would take away. And then we can experiment with them. Luckily, the founder of our company who created it is a chemist and a um, microbiologist. So he got his start working in hospitals, in labs, testing different products and doing these things. He still does our formulations for us. So that was my next question. Yeah. So um, he still, so this is, this brand is still like his baby that he started years and years and years ago, but he is, you know, he's just, he doesn't really care about the sales and the stuff of it. He likes to do the creation and he loves what we're doing with it. And he loves how we're growing that he wasn't able to do that. So now he just has the opportunity to do what he wants to do, which is to refine processes and to create new stuff. So my part of the company is I have all these wild ideas of all these cool things that I want to do. And then I go, I want something to do this. And then he goes, well, you can't, or you can, <laughs> and then this is how you're going to have to do it because there's all different types of parameters that you have to check off. Luckily, we have a very strong, tight knit team that has been involved with our projects and you know the past history of the company that stayed with it. Because, like myself, I'm not alone in that. The products have the ability to change people's lives internally and externally, and that goes for me, our team the prior team who's still involved and people who take our products. So it's, I'm really lucky in that regard because I don't have to pay for millions of dollars in research and development teams because I have one at my disposal and be honest with you, I wouldn't say it's free, but it's close to free. So you now that was amazing to still have the founder involved, to have mm -hmm. him working directly with you. It, it solidifies the foundation and the core values that he originally instituted within it, I would imagine, and allows you to both build on top of what you bring to the table, what you find from the people, what they want, what you see they want, and then allows you to go back to him who has the expertise to be able to do that research and create new things. A million percent. It makes my life extremely easy to know that I can actually trust somebody and has the best interests of um, our company and the people who are using our products at heart, not just, you know, the almighty dollar sign. Yeah. So what's the most revolutionary part of this endeavor? Um, well, I will tell you that the revolutionary part is to offer individuals the exact same benefits that prescription drugs offer without any of the side effects. So that is exactly what we do. There is, and always has been a massive market for very specific prescription drugs like human growth hormone, which is incredibly regulated now. And if you can even get your hands on it, good luck. It's, you know, three to $10,000 a month. But um, you have the the second option, which are prescription peptides, which are not inexpensive in and of themselves. However, they are, you know, federally banned now for what in the space that we're in. And people love those products. They love those products. But for me, um, as a user, and as this is where just my brain is, I don't like, I have nothing against modern medicine. I make a great living off of modern medicine. However, I find that when it comes to synthetic drugs, they, they should be used with a, a, a little bit of caution, not just, you know, jump it, because I want, you know, better skin. I'm going to go jump and take, you know, a synthetic drug. Synthetic drugs by nature are what are called selective poisons. You will incur some sort of a side effect. Now, for a lot of people, it's very small. You never notice it. And that's great for some people. It's life changing in a terrible way. And to, 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 to be able to offer individuals the same types of benefits without those side effects that typically come along with that kind of stuff. And frankly, to do it at a fraction of the cost, that is the revolutionary part. That is why this right. business is growing the way that it is, is because we're able to do the same thing, but we don't, you know, 
have to put your health at risk while trying to improve it. So that kind of answers what my next question is. What do you? Oh, you told me not to do that. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. I mean, it doesn't completely. I'll give you an opportunity to completely answer the question. But how do you hope you guys will shape and change the way things are done in the future? I want to continue to do what we're doing right now. So I sent you some stuff. I sent you two products. The second one we don't even talk about, and I want to talk about it, but it's a sleep product. I find that one of the, so like, this is like a real thing for me. I, I, I love making money and it's great. Everybody goes to work. We all have families to feed. We all have business to do, but I have a very specific worldview of trying to help individuals without having to be dependent on drugs, whether that's prescription drugs, you know, street narcotics, anything. I don't like it. It's not for me. And I, I would rather just try and help people. So, um, the next product you have in your hand is a alternative to sleep aids prescription. Like, Imagine but not being able people to have problems sleeping. I know. And that's what I was about to say. Imagine having like severe sleep issues, meaning you have chronic insomnia, you, you can't sleep during the night, you're struggling with anxiety or different things. And like your sleep. So I have, I have a, a one and a half year old. Okay. And my wife is absolutely phenomenal. My wife has taken the brunt of most of the sleepless nights, if not almost completely all of them. And the, the type of pressure and the type of stress that it puts on somebody to be chronically sleep deprived and how their body operates differently, how they feel differently. And then having to like trudge through day-to-day -day life because you can't just check out, right? You got a kid to take care of. You got a work to show up for. It's a real problem. I am super lucky. Now I take my own product, but I'm very lucky that I don't struggle from severe sleep issues, but I know a lot of people that have, and we work a lot with military veterans, DOD guys, and they struggle big time with sleep, law enforcement officers, et cetera. When, when you have those issues, typically the only thing that will really work for you is synthetic sleep aid drugs, which are extremely habit forming. They cause all kinds of different issues and they're not necessarily giving you a better night's sleep. They're rendering you unconscious so you can just be asleep. The second thing is people turn to narcotics or they turn to alcohol and both the same things, highly addictive, and technically, when you drink and go to bed, it destroys your sleep. Even one glass of wine will destroy your deep sleep cycles. So you're, you're immediate. We could, I mean, I could go on this. Or I'm going to shut up here in a second. But when you, <laughs> when you, when you interrupt and you, even if you're waking up one to two times a night, okay, you are disrupting two different types of sleep cycles, your SWS, slow wave sleep and your REM sleep, rapid eye movement. Both of those sleep cycles are absolutely necessary for natural hormone secretion. So hormones are really important. Okay. They are simply catalysts that tell your body how to operate when they do not get secreted and, and tell your body how to operate. Right. Well, guess what? It's not going to do that. Your life is going to be all out of whack and crazy stuff, blah, blah, blah. The point is if you're able to help people get those natural, that natural deep sleep without having to tie them or handcuff them to some sort of a substance, whether that's illegal or legal, that's a huge impact for me. And that is like, that's a big deal. So I went off on a total tangent. I did everything you told me not to do, Justine, but I, no, I felt it's okay. it's, um, that's a big deal. And I, um, that's what we do as a company and that's what we're going to continue to do. So as we bring this uh, conversation to a close, are there any stories that you might be able to share of folks that you know, besides yourself and your wife that have taken these, <laughs> whether it's the bio protein or, you know, something yeah, yeah, else yeah, yeah. and that you could share the impact that they've had an experience. A million percent. I mean, I have testimonials or something that we are not short on. I use a few very specific ones because to me they're impactful and uh, you know, they're something that I relate to. The first one being, um, we're very big in combat sports. So MMA, you know, pro fighting. All right. We have a, an eight time world champion that we gave product to because, you know, he's a combat athlete and he does great stuff on Instagram and it's really cool. So anyway, when you get a testimonial back from people, you would think from this individual would be like, oh yeah, I won another title or, you know, I'm killing it in the gym. And it wasn't any of that. It was that his wife told him since she had, since he had started taking the product that it made him a better father. Now, the reason being is because forget all of the gym stuff and all the working out on world titles. What it did was it was able to help him get better energy, right? Whether it's through the sleep or, you know, hormone modulation, et cetera. And instead of having to come home and take a nap after he was done running his gym or competing or whatever it is, 
instead he started playing with his kids more and being more present in his family and being able to participate like screw the world titles like that's a huge thing like and he's like man i'll never go back it just makes me a better dad that's one that's a big one the second one is a little bit more fun for the dudes but um we do a ton of work with the military um more private security and, and ex-military than uh than active duty but We've actually been tested by the FBI HRT team, which is hostage, hostage rescue team. Uh, got a stamp of approval with those products as well. But when you're when you're in the military and you're doing things like what would be called an explosive breacher, so we work with a gentleman named Greg. I'll withhold his last name, but he um, did all kinds of crazy stuff overseas, um, and he then became a SWAT explosive breacher for New Orleans, I believe. And anyway, he for, through all of these things and years of all of this stuff, right? He built explosives, okay? And when you discharge an explosive, it you're not ever really that far away. You will incur what's called a blast overpressure. So the actual pressure from the explosive, the charge, whatever it is, your brain and your head absor absorbs that. Doesn't matter what helmet you have on. And over time, it will cause TBI traumatic brain injury, which is the same type of thing that football players incur or other types of combat athletes that connect. And with traumatic brain injury, you can experience side effects like, um, in Greg's specific case, he would suffer from ocular seizures. So his eyes would seizure, okay? Mm -hmm. After taking the product, and we didn't know Greg at all, um, after buying the product, taking it, he had a complete 100% reduction in ocular seizures. So he stopped taking the product. He's like, this is, no, there's no way. This is whatever. Placebo, mm -hmm. which is great, but it's placebo. Stopped taking it, took several weeks off, ocular seizures came back. Started taking it again. He's been taking it for three years. Greg and I have actually become great friends. And um, he hasn't, he's had a complete, I believe, 100% reduction in ocular seizures since. Now, there's tons of science behind how that works and growth factors in the, eye, in the human eye, et cetera. But that's for, you know, another show. But those are, those are two of my favorites. Wow. Well, I so appreciate you sharing that because I think a couple of things it tells me is like, if you could hear those kinds of stories, it means that it may not happen for everyone, but it's certainly going to continue to happen for a lot of people in different ways. And exactly. so people are going to have different experiences. It also would beg the question like, you know, what kind of additional research are people doing when they do have these findings? Because if you can have that finding, it can have a much larger impact based on research and connecting with other trials and doctors. Percent. And that's a whole nother conversation. That's a whole nother conversation. And as easy as it is, because we have started the clinical trial process with different things, but as easy it is to say those things, clinical studies and research are not like a weekend job. They are no. decades of work for the same thing. So it, it does take time and it is a, um, a big thing, but you can, I mean, you can go online and we're not revolutionary in the fact of what we're working with. There, there is so much science and research behind what we do, which are growth factors. Um, you could Google it and you could spend all day reading studies. So, and I implore you to do so if it's something you're interested in or you hear it, anything that piques your interest from what I'm talking about. But yeah, you can Google that stuff and read about it all day. Awesome. Dustin, thank you so much for uh, joining me today and uh, sharing your information. And I wish you the best of luck on everything that you're doing because it's super interesting and I can't wait to I can't wait till more people are talking about this that I know where it becomes sort of a household conversation and people share their experiences and the impact is having on them well I appreciate the time Justine and, and you allowing me to come on your show and hang out with you for a few minutes and so for those folks that are either watching or listening and wanted to get the product what's the best way for them to do that you can visit any one of I mean, however many clinics we have around the country, if you would like to know if there is a clinic in your area, you can go on to the, everybody has social media these days, go on to the social media on the Instagram. You can find us at bioprotein tech, B I O P R O T E C H message, the DM, whatever, tell us where you're at. We'll find a clinic for you. If you would rather go around the clinic route, we have built the functionality online on our website, bioproteintech.com. And you can order directly from us. It ships in like, the ship's typically same day. It gets there in like two days. And then you're, you know, you're off to the races. Awesome. Thanks so much, Dustin. And uh, again, uh, best of luck for everything. Thank you, Justine.